G'day guys, Max here from FM Scout. This is part two of my tactical instruction analysis video series. In Football Manager, if you go into the tactics page, you can change the width of your team during a match uh, all the way from very narrow to extremely wide. So how exactly do these uh, different widths affect the behaviors of your players? That's what I'm trying to find out in this video today. If you want to skip straight to the conclusion, um, I will add a timestamp in the comment section below, so um, do feel free to skip straight to the conclusion. Guys, in these videos, uh, I'm using an experimental method that I've set up myself. Uh, it's a bit tedious if I have to go through it in every single video that I upload, so uh, what I'll do is I'll add a link to my previous video, uh, part one of this uh, tactical instruction video series. So um, that's where I explain the experimental setup in detail. So do refer to that video uh, to find out exactly how I conduct these experiments. So today we're going to try changing the attacking width of my team. I go through 10 matches uh, when the team width is set as very narrow, uh, 10 matches when the team width is standard, and 10 matches when the width is extremely wide. I don't change anything else during these experiments, uh, it's just the width that I changed. At the end of every match, I record the statistics of the players, uh, including the number of shots, passes, crosses, uh, running distance, uh, and the number of ball touches. In these matches, I used a 4-4-2 formation, and um, I'm focusing on the wingers and the fullbacks uh, because they're the players who play out on the wings and are um, uh, most likely to be affected by the different team widths. So let's have a look at the results together. I've recorded all these statistics into Excel and I've turned them into these graphs. Uh, so first of all, the number of shots. So for uh, the left and right wingers, when the team width is very narrow, uh, these guys recorded 1.4 shots on average. Uh, when, the, when the team width was standard, they recorded 1.7 shots on average. And when the team width was extremely wide, uh, they recorded 1.2 shots on average. For the left and right fullbacks, uh, when the team width was very narrow, they recorded uh, 0.1 shots uh, on average. Uh, when the team width was standard, they recorded 0.25 shots on average. And when the team width was extremely wide, um, it was 0.2 shots on average. So guys, um, from these bar graphs, uh, I don't think I'm seeing any pattern between team width and the number of shots for both wingers and fullbacks. Okay, let's have a look at the number of crosses made uh, during the match. So with wingers, um, I did notice uh, a slight positive correlation between team width and the number of crosses made uh, during a match. So when the team width was set as extremely wide, um, the number of uh, crosses was the highest. And when the team width was very narrow, the, the number of crosses was the lowest. Um, but this positive correlation is uh, only true for wingers. So with fullbacks, um, you know, as you can see, there's no noticeable, uh, noticeable pattern uh, between the number of crosses and the team width. Next, let's have a look at the number of passes and the number of ball touches made during a match. I'm looking at these uh, two stats together because the number of passes and ball touches, they sort of reflect how, how involved these players are in a game of football, uh, depending on the team width. So guys, if you have a look at these uh, bar graphs, uh, there is a bit of a pattern. So when the team width is more narrow, uh, the players record less passes and uh, less number of ball touches, which means that they are involved less in the match that they're playing. On the other hand, uh, when the team width is wider, the number of passes and the ball touches go up, which means that uh, which means that these players become a bit more involved in the game. Right. Lastly, let's have a look at the running distance covered by these players during a match. So the left and right wingers recorded around 14.7 uh, kilometers per match, and the fullbacks covered around 11.9 kilometers per match. But there is very little difference between these different team widths. Um, so regardless of the team width, uh, you know, whether it was very narrow, standard, or extremely wide, the wingers and the fullbacks covered more or less similar amount of distance uh, during, during these matches. Okay, uh, next we're going to have a look at some heat maps. Guys, the heat maps that you can find in Football Manager are not very accurate. You know, after a match in Football Manager, you can go into the match report and uh, you can view the heat maps of uh, individual players. So according to the game developers, those heat maps in Football Manager, it, it, they show you where the ball touches were made, which is a bit silly because that's not the definition of a heat map. 
A heat map should show you uh, where the players were on the pitch, regardless of whether they were in possession of the ball or not. So in order to acquire an accurate heat map, I had to find a program that, that could capture the movements of players on the pitch uh, in Football Manager. Fortunately, I did get in touch with a very talented programmer uh, who is also a fan of football, Ma football Manager, and he wrote a new program for me using Python. So the program is still in its alpha stage and uh, it still needs a bit of polishing here and there, but when the program is ready, I will upload it on a, um, on a suitable platform online and um, you will all be able to download it and um, use the program to create a proper, accurate heat maps in Football Manager. Anyway, here I have uh, some heat maps that I generated using that uh, program. So I have three heat maps on this side, which is when the team width was set as very narrow. And on the other side, um, I have three heat maps when the team width was set as extremely wide. These two heat maps at the top, uh, they show you the movements of wingers in a 4-4-2 formation. These two uh, show you the movements of wingers in a 4-2-3-1 formation. And these two uh, at the bottom, uh, they show you the movements of wingbacks in a 5-3-2 formation. So what I want to focus on is um, whether these players are positioned narrower uh, when the team width is very narrow, and whether they are positioned wider when the team width is uh, extremely wide. So what do you guys reckon? To me, honestly, I don't notice any difference you know, between the different team widths. This is a little bit surprising because... You know, you would expect the distance between the two wingers or the two uh, wingbacks to be wider on this side uh, when the team width is extremely wide, but that doesn't really seem to be the case uh, according to these heat maps. How about we'll try having a look at the average positions of players during a match. So this is something that you can do by um, going into a match report after a match in Football Manager. And if you go into this section here, uh, you can view the average positions of your players during a match. So we'll have a look at the average positions of players uh, with the ball because um, team width is something that comes under this tab here when the team is in possession of the ball. So it makes sense that you know we, uh, we have a look at the position of the players when they are in possession of the ball. So again, I have six images here. On the left-hand side, uh, the team width is very narrow. And on the right hand side, the team width is extremely wide. Uh, these two images at the top uh, is using a 4-4-2 formation. These two are using a 4-2-3-1 formation. And these two at the bottom uh, is using a 5-3-2 formation. Again, guys, um, I don't think I'm seeing any difference between the left and the right hand side. Um, so on this side, the players are supposed to be playing extremely wide. But the average positions of the players are not really that different from compared to this side when the players are supposed to be playing very narrow. In case you don't believe these findings, let's try experimenting in a more realistic situation. So this is the Community Shield match between uh, Man City and Leicester City in uh, FM22. So what I do is I play one match as Leicester City when the team width was set as very narrow. And after that, I play another match uh, again as Leicester City when the team width was set as extremely wide. At the end of both matches, um, I go into the match report and um, I constructed a heat map of the entire team for Leicester City and another heat map uh, just for the left and right wingers. I also captured the average positions of the team uh, when they were in possession of the ball. Okay, so I have two sets of images here. So I won't tell you which side belongs to which, uh, which team with because I want you guys to have a guess. So... Which side do you think is using the very narrow width and which side do you think is using the extremely wide width? You see what I mean? I really don't think there is a difference that is generated by uh, changing the team width in Football Manager. I must say this is a little bit disappointing because I did want to see a, a real difference in the team width uh, you know, as you change the tactical instructions. You know in the tactics page uh, here, when you move this slider from left and right, you can see all these uh, individual dots becoming ne either narrow or wide. So this doesn't actually happen on the field in the game, at least according to the evidence that uh, we've looked at today. Okay, finally, uh, what I want to do is to find out if there is such a thing as a superior team width and inferior team width uh, in, in a football manager tactic. So the question is, 
Is there a particular team with that produces a higher win rate in Football Manager? Let's find out. So for this experiment, I'm using a custom league set up by the FM Scout team, which has 144 matches in a single season. Again, guys, do refer to my previous video, uh, you know, part, part one of this uh, tactical instruction video series uh, for more details on how I set up the experiment for today. So here are the results. The total sample size is 432 matches per width. Uh, so 432 matches when the, uh, when the team width was very narrow, 432 matches with uh, standard width, and uh, 432 matches with uh, extremely wide width. So when the team width was very narrow, the, the team that's being tested, uh, they've recorded uh, 119 wins, uh, 66 draws, and 247 losses. When the team was using standard width, uh, they recorded 115 uh, wins, 61 draws, and 256 losses. And when the team was using extremely wide width, uh, they've recorded 116 wins, 81 draws, and 235 losses. So the team that I'm testing, uh, they did record slightly higher number of wins when they were using a very narrow width and the least amount of losses when they were playing with extremely wide width. But is this a significant difference? I mean, the, the difference between 119 and uh, 115, you know, four wins out of uh, more than a four, uh, 400 trials is, I don't think it's a very significant difference. So also, Considering that the heat maps that I showed you today, um, they didn't show any difference in the actual team width on the field. Um, so I am actually leaning towards the conclusion that these differences in the number of wins and draws that you see here, uh, maybe they're just a result of random chance, uh, meaning that there's no particular width that is superior than the other widths in the game. All right, guys, time to make a summary on the findings for today. One, as team width becomes wider, the number of passes and ball touches go up for players who play out on the wings, such as wingers and fullbacks, meaning that these players become more involved in the game uh, when the team width is wider. The number of shots, crosses, and the running distance stay more or less constant as you change the team width. Two, when you adjust the team width uh, on the tactic screen, there is no actual change in the team width between your players on the pitch. I know this is a surprising result, but that is the conclusion that I have to make, given the evidence that I showed you today. Three, there is no particular team width that is either superior or inferior, uh, you know, in terms of the rates of wins and losses. Okay, guys, that's it for today's video. Do you agree with what I talked about today? What do you think about team width in Football Manager? Comment below to let me know. Guys, I actually have my own uh, separate YouTube channel uh, called Evidence Based Football Manager. I have more videos there where um, I experiment with the various game mechanics in Football Manager. So do visit my channel to uh, check out my other videos as well. On the uh, FM Scout channel, I will be uh, continuing my tactical analysis uh, video series here on this channel. So um, I will probably end up um, alternating between the two channels, FM Scout and um, Evidence-Based Football Manager. All right, guys. See you next time.